Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Claire Prosser. I'm with Protivity, and I'm joined today by Julie Masillo, who is a sales engineer with Protivity. Before we get started, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We do this every two weeks. Um, it's a bi-weekly series where we discuss anything um, SharePoint. I've got up here that our next one's on July 24th. We do have that one, but we also have one on July 10th where our topic will be empower SharePoint users to collaborate on any document on any device. So there's a couple of the next ones. The one after that, July 24th, realizing value through governance and staff education. Our full schedule is available on our website, sharepoint.protivity.com slash webinars. We do have some training coming up. We have some webinars and um, some, some full days of training. Um, our full schedule, as always, is available on our website. So back to today's session. Today's session is being recorded, and we do keep um, all our archived webinars on our site. You can go back and take a look through, um, see what we've chatted about in the past. If you have any questions for Julie as we go along, you are welcome to use the question window, and we will get to those at the end of the session. So again, today's topic is the introduction to SharePoint 2013 search, and I will hand it over to Julie. Julie, are you there? I am. Claire, can you hear me? I can, yes. Great. Okay. So thanks, Claire, and thanks, everyone, for joining us today for the introduction to SharePoint 2013 search. Uh, if any of you have not seen it yet, uh, there's some exciting developments with search. There's some really great features of search. And even for those of you who have seen it, we'll break it down a little further so you can understand all of the different components. So. Let's talk a little bit about what is new in search. So most of you are probably familiar with a search that looks something like this. Uh, this is a 2010 pretty out of the box search, maybe a couple of refiners added. But generally, this is the view that many of you are probably still looking at today, or even a 2007 version, which takes away this panel on the side and really is just a list of links and repetitive entirely sure about. So what it looks like now is pretty different. And I'm just going to pop into a screenshot quickly. And there's a pretty big change from 2010 to 2013, and obviously 2007 to 2013. What we have is a whole new way of looking at information, a whole new way to present search results. And also behind the scenes, there's a lot of different sort of uh, analysis and crunching going on behind the scenes to bring these results um, to the forefront and present them to users. So today we will break that all down <laughs> and we'll get a real live look at it working and go over some of the features so you can get a little bit better sense of what you're getting with that SharePoint 2013 search. So a few points about it before we go into demo mode. It is based on what's called the FAST platform. Several years ago, Microsoft purchased a search uh, called FAST. It was something that could be installed um, you know, independently of SharePoint. It had nothing to do with SharePoint specifically when they bought it. Uh, a lot of um, places like Best Buy and other e-commerce organizations used it for their refining capability in terms of being able to say, I want this size, this flavor, this brand, this color a product, so it was a very uh, powerful search in terms of the attributes about each type of information that it was searching. Uh, also, the search was very scalable, so it could search millions and millions and millions of records very quickly, um, and it had a great sort of architecture underneath it. So in SharePoint 2010, that was available as a separate license and a separate cost, so a lot of people did not purchase this. It was I believe it was almost as expensive, or if not more expensive, actually, than SharePoint itself. So there were some cost prohibitive issues in implementing that fast-based search with SharePoint 2010. 2013, they took all the concepts and all of the sort of technology from fast and integrated it into the base product. Um, I know there were some rewrites on it, but generally the, the overall concept of it was pulled into 2013. It's part of the license. It's also part of Office. 
365. So it's no additional cost. Um, there is some recommendation that you know, if you really have a lot of information, it may be best to have a separate server to run it on, but it doesn't require a different license. It's just sort of more performance issues. So some of the capabilities that this new search brings, um, there's a few things. There's sort of items behind the scenes, and then there are items for the end user. So there are things like recommendations. In the old SharePoint, there was something called best bets. In here, there are things called promotions, where you can actually select to promote different items based on keywords. Uh, there's also a recommendations engine. So based on content, meta tags, um, what other people have looked at, it will also provide recommendations um, you know, in a more sophisticated way than just a manual best bets promotion type thing. Um, you can still do a promotion or best bet, well, you know, a new version of the best bet, um, but the recommendations engine actually gives that um, gives users additional recommendations dynamically, so that you're not actually um, having to seed all of those keyword recommendations. Um, another thing that is is very important is that you can actually define special query rules to sort of promote, make certain things more or less important based on your organization, your specific content. Um, there's improved content. That just means we're, we're getting better quality results. Um, the crawls are far better. So even when you update something in an Office 365 environment, the, um, uh, the result is available very quickly. Um, so you know, you're not waiting anymore for a full day and, uh, to get new search results or anything like that. <laughs> it's a much faster process. Um, and then, of course, you can uh, really bring in other result sources much more easily through this tool. So um, being able to point it to other, uh, other sources of data, other, other sites, um, and that sort of thing. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, for the end user, there are a number of improvements on just the experience of searching. Um, verticals, previews, refiners, we're going to look at each one of these separately. Um, sorting, being able to actually sort results in a different way. Um, the, the concept of an expertise search, and then also just sort of bringing that search down to a really granular level and even searching lists and libraries specifically for certain information, which is a really nice feature as well. So a real quick thing I thought was, it was worth bringing up, um, this is actually right from TechNet, so you guys are welcome to kind of go out and take a look at some of the information that Microsoft provides. It's, it's a little bit of information about how search results are ranked, because people always ask me this. So I wanted to put this up. Um, the content is the number one piece of information that the search, um, the search processor is looking at. So what are the words in a document? What are the words in a PowerPoint? So all of that deep, deep content is being evaluated for relevancy. Um, that means it's really important when you have something like a video um, or an image there isn't any content per se. So what you have to do is then rely on the next piece, which is metadata. So when you are creating video files, um, image files, any kind of assets like that that actually don't have a lot of words, you're going to want to use some rich metadata, um, descriptions, and things like that to mark these videos and things for search later. Um, you, you know, just, just to make sure that people are able to find this great information you're putting out there if it's not an office um, document that's easily searchable for content itself. Um, web graph data, so um, what sort of inside that web page, if it is um, web content, also file types um, weigh in on that, and then also interaction. So how many times have people actually clicked on a result? All of those things weigh on the relevance and what order a search result is, is, um, is presented. And then there's a lot of other manipulation you can do behind the scenes. So we'll get into some of the highlights of the search now. And these are the highlights of search 2013 as I have um, laid them out for an end user. So <clears throat> these are easily demo for you, demoable for you, so you can kind of see real time what, what each of these things are. Um, so the first thing that we're going to look at is the vertical. Um, that's the items across the top of the search page. So if we uh, flip into another um, view here and actually look at a search, um, 
you can see across the top we have everything, people, conversations, and videos. Um, these are the verticals, and so you can actually create new verticals. You can add verticals, customize them, call them other things. Um, in our, you know, even on um, Protivity's actual internet that we have, we call this multimedia because we pull audio and podcasts in there as well um, as videos. But uh, basically, these items are something you can customize. And so, if we look at each one of these. Um, it's a specific kind of content. And if you had a, an organization that was really um, reliant on PowerPoint or another certain, you know, maybe file type, you could actually create something up here called presentation or another element that might be relevant for your end users. As it is, these, were, these verticals control what you see in the search results in terms of also this panel, which we'll talk about in just a second. So if I click on everything, we see PDF, file types, author, et cetera, out of the box. If I click on people, we have a totally different set of, um, of uh, refiners and different type of information that's going to come up here. So each of those elements are going to control um, a different search experience for the end user. So if we take a look, we no longer have file types. We have things like department, job title, keywords, et cetera. And so the story goes as we click through the rest of it. So verticals is really about um, uh, sort of slicing into a set of, of information. And then we then look at the refiners, which is sort of the next element that I wanted to break out for you. So if we go back to our PowerPoint here, we see that this is called the refiner. And these are all very customizable. So in our own intranet, we have things like contributors, industry, country. Out of the box, you get um, a couple different options. So for, for people, for instance, we have department, job title, keywords, um, and then back to everything, we'll just kind of take a look at some of these splicers, um, like result type and author. And the power of these refiners is once you get to sort of the vertical, as we're calling these now, that you're interested in, you can further narrow down this information. So if I'm looking for something with the word project in it, and I know it's a PowerPoint, I can actually just refine down to, to only show me PowerPoint. And so this is a really powerful tool if you're looking for a specific file, especially, or you know that a certain person um, authored it, and I'm not sure if he authored it or not, but, um, you know, so you can further um, narrow down on all of these pieces and sort of get more information, um, get more specific. And I think that was the problem with the old SharePoint search is you really couldn't do much. You just were presented with a big list of, of files and stuff, and it was up to you to try and um, navigate through that. So. Um, so this is a really powerful tool, this, this refiner. Again, with the people, um, you know, you're looking at a lot of good sort of slice and dicers. This can be metadata out of your managed metadata, which in this case it is. These are all um, uh, sets of terms that are available, and so we can sort of narrow down on these folks and get more specific um, people who are involved in a project only in the sales and marketing group. So, Again, those refiners are all configurable. Um, and so when you go to set up your SharePoint 2013 instance, plan some time to look at the search pages. I think that's one thing that people sort of just you know, leave to the end and then kind of forget about or assume that, that the default is going to be perfect for them. And that's not always the case. So taking some time to define what refiners are important to you based on which vertical you're in is going to make a better search experience for your organization. So the next thing we'll take a look at is some other UI changes. Um, and these, these terms are uh, very official from Microsoft. So these are the sort of the words that you'll see, that refiner, the vertical, all of those are official Microsoft terminology. Um, the item display template is what you actually see in the search results. So this is um, this happens to be just a little snippet from our own <coughs> from our own intranet, and you see that 
we have um, just a little description, the URL, the title, um, and then it goes into the sort of hover display template, which is another piece, and I'll show you that real time in a second. Um, we go back to the real example, and we take a look at these. We see that it's a similar setup, but if you wanted to show a date or something else right in line in the search, you could actually configure that item display template to have an additional piece of data here in each search result. So that's, again, something that's configurable. And then another thing to notice is that um, the results look different for each vertical. So this item display template, which, again, is this piece of information highlighted in blue, if I go to people, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to have a person's name, a title, a department, the ask me about language, and their description and photo. So again, you can, you can define and sort of control and customize by vertical, by item dis display template, and by refiner. So you're starting to see how flexible this search is because of all these little elements you can control. Um, and so I think that's really interesting to remember is if people say, you know, this isn't really, I really wish I could see, you know, their office or their department, you know, whatever it might be, you have the power in a display template to actually control that and present that data as well. So next, um, next segment of this is actually looking a little bit at the hover menu itself. So if we go to the other side of this, screenshot, we see that there's actually a hover um, that gives you a ton of information. Um, and this can also be changed by this display template. So you could, you know, potentially put some other data here. You could change how it's presented, et cetera. If we go back to a real example, we can see this is a really great thing to look at. So by type, it's going to show some different things. So if we look at a web page, all we see, we actually see a little snippet of the web page. We see some different results from within that site that also match. So that's kind of a nice feature if you're looking at an entire site. Um, and then we have things like open, so that will actually take us to that site. We can follow this site, which is another SharePoint 2013 convention. Um, or we could send somebody a link, and all this does is just pop into your email and populate it with a link, and then you can forward that to somebody if you want them to go to the particular site. And all of that is <laughs> without actually ever having to visit the site. For a PowerPoint file, for instance, it's a different sort of look, and there's some different options in that hover panel. So not only are we looking at um, the, the PowerPoint file, and excuse me, it looks like it's running a little slow today, but um, what we have is actually a breakdown of all the sections that might be in that PowerPoint and headings. So we could actually jump directly into the PowerPoint if we wanted. We could edit that file. We could follow. We could send. Or we could even do something like go to that viewing library. So I can actually click on this and go find the library where this is hosted. And that's a really great thing because, you know, sometimes you want to know you know, are there other files there that might make sense that you might also need? Um, is it in the right location? Maybe you accidentally saved it somewhere else and, and you really would like to, you know, put it where it should be, something like that. Um, but then also, what's really important with this um, hover window is you can actually click through this PowerPoint presentation. And this is the same with any Office file. I'll show you a Word document in a second. But this is really great because you might be looking for a really specific slide from a presentation you've seen, and you're able to actually look at it in line without ever leaving the search results page. So if you're like, oh, this isn't it. I want a different one. Then you can continue down this list and look for another PowerPoint. You can refine here by PowerPoint, whatever you need to do. Um, and then the other great thing here, there's another few features about downloading a copy, printing the PDF. Etc. These are all coming from Office Web Apps. So in 2013, Office Web Apps is required for these preview panels. So if you want this um, this actual sort of capability to show up on your internet and people to be able to browse these things, 
um, from the search results and actually anywhere in the site, um, you will need to have Office Web Apps running. It's not a separate license anymore, but again, it requires a separate server just because it's doing a lot of work here, right? Every search result has a preview, basically, and Office Web Apps is the <coughs> application doing all of that work. So um, again, very powerful. You can jump right in, you know, deep links into the actual um, into the actual PowerPoint, et cetera, and that's all right here from the window. And again, we have those um, options across the bottom that are really helpful. Uh, same with the Word document. You can see um, see right here. Oops, sorry, oh, got a new mouse. I'm having some problems. Um, you can actually scroll through this document. You can you know take a look at it and see what's in here. There's um, a number of pages. Also, you can see any headings here. And again, it has the sort of document library um, content type hover window. So you can change the hover window based on content type. Now, if we go to a different vertical, again, we're seeing the fact that that hover will change. So um, we're going to pop back into people. And the hover menu is really nice, or the hover display template, rather, is really nice in people because it almost gives you a little um, CV bio of that person. And what it's doing is it's pulling all the stuff out of the profile, and it's going to give you um, just a, oops, I don't know what that is. That was weird. Uh, huh. I've never seen that before. Sorry, y'all. Quite strange. Okay, hang on one second, and we will go to another window here. Hold, please. All right, let's see. I was running that in Chrome to make sure you all knew it would work in Chrome. Usually it does. I'm not sure what the, which problem we're having here. So let's see. Find some people here that will work out. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you the people today. That's kind of strange. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back to that window real quick and refresh. We'll give it one more shot because it was working fine a few minutes ago before you all arrived, of course. <clears throat> there we go. So we see Allie has um, a full sort of profile, also documents that she's authored. And then you can also go to their full profile and see their information. So again, this hover panel, totally different than the other hover panel, but you get the idea that you can really customize these toward the content type and toward the result type that you're, um, that you're looking at. So, um, so those, are, those are some of the highlights. So there's, once again, to review, we have the vertical, we have the refiner, we have the item display template, which is the blue component, or sort of the little summary piece you'll see. And then we have the hover template. And each one of those can be customized according to the vertical, according to um, the type of content you're looking at. And it's actually it's a very powerful thing. And you know, there's, there's a lot of value in sort of spending time planning that. Um, so the only other thing I wanted to just talk about quickly today, because we're actually already almost out of time, is um, we go back to our show here. Um, there are other features like searching this list, people-specific searches, and connecting to other data sources. Things like search this list. If I go back to um, a very specific list of content here, and this is a small list, but you can imagine on a really large library or a really large list of videos or something like that, if I search for the word, uh, let's see, Ooh, let's go with house and do a quick search on this. I found two results that have house. 
Um, and you know, you could narrow down a list with a, very quickly with this quick search that's just sitting on the top of the list. And that's out of the box. That's how all the lists and libraries look um, in SharePoint 2013. So it's a very quick way to just narrow down um, large lists of data. I have a client right now that's managing about 300 um, plus tasks that have a lot of very detailed information in them. And they have this on top, and they're able to just quickly type in a word like technology or uh, process or a specific software that they're you know, working with right now. And they're able to get through that list very quickly. So it's a really valuable tool for them. Um, and then the other things that we, you know, that are available to you that you, know, you can really find out a lot more on TechNet and Microsoft site is connecting to other data sources. So if you have information and content that does not reside in SharePoint, maybe it's a SQL database or another system, there are definitely ways to write connectors um, so that this search um, can actually connect to that information as well and present it. Um, there is, of course, always the requirement that you have to be aware of any permissions and security that's um, present in that data if it's another system. So that would take some additional time to make sure that you're honoring that security if, if people are using Active Directory in that system to make sure that people aren't really accessing content that they shouldn't access. So those are some considerations. And we have three minutes left. Um, so I wanted to stop and pause, and I hope this was very helpful for you, and just wanted to know if there's any questions at all. Thanks, Julie. Yep, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so the first one, is the search across site collections or within a site collection? Um, by default, it's within a site collection. You can point it to other uh, site collections as well. So you can have multiple sources. Um, and then a question came in that you actually sort of answered as you went along. She asked, is the hover feature included as part of the out-of-the-box search configuration, or is that a separate configuration? And then you kind of answered that part. So no license costs for read-only in the hover pane, or would it require a license if the end user was to use the edit in that? There, there, is, um, there is a requirement, and it kind of depends. I, I, I'm not the... Uh, you don't ever want to claim to be the licensing expert in SharePoint because I don't think anyone is because it changes so often. But um, if you have a uh, internal licensing, so if this is just for an intranet, um, you should be fine with being able to open files, edit files, that sort of thing. If um, if there's external people, there are some issues, and there is a special editing license for Office Web Apps. I think that would be an entirely separate um, 30 on Thursday to break all of that down, though. So. <laughs> all right. Um, next question. Is fuzzy search in 2013? I'm sorry. What was the question? Is fuzzy search in 2013? I guess I would need a little more information on exactly what we're talking about there. OK. Um, Next question, does it require custom thesaurus files? Not unless you want them. I mean, you can create custom thesaurus, but you don't need to. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Julie. Um, this has been a really useful um, presentation. Hope everybody learned a little bit here today. Um, we will be back here in two weeks on July 10th. Until then, everybody have a great 4th of July, and we will see you next time.